We're here in Bethesda, where we're going to be meeting an award-winning architect, James McDonald. Has designed different kind of houses, uh, from a small contemporary jewel box houses, all the way to grand mansion, chateau-esque kind of homes. Welcome to the American Dream, where we focus on lifestyle, culture, and real estate. I'm your host, Amy Scruggs. Today, we're going to the great DC area in one of the greatest cities in the nation. We're gonna meet Alex Martinez and Nareet Coombe as they take us around the city. Let's check out this month's episode. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial-free, unscripted. I got it. These are stories for you and by you. Hi, I'm Alex Martinez. And Nareet Coombe. Welcome back to the American Dream. We're here in Bethesda, where we're going to be meeting an award-winning architect, James McDonald. James is a Washington metro area architect, very well known, very decorated with a lot of awards, has designed different kind of houses, uh, from a small contemporary jewel box houses, all the way to grand mansion, chateau-esque kind of homes. Uh, we right here in Bethesda, we're going to start with the contemporary house he has designed for his client and showcase that amazing house. And then later in the show, we'll take you to Virginia and take a look at a totally different style, a chateau home that he has designed. So let's go and meet right, James. Let's do it. Hi, James. Welcome. Come on in. Great to see you again. Great seeing you both. Good to see you, James, again. Welcome to this, this wonderful contemporary custom home up here in Bethesda. I want to show you around. Beautiful. James, so we know that you deal with a lot of diversity as far as your clientele. Can you tell us how different it is to be here in the Washington metropolitan area? That's one of the fun things about being in Washington, D.C. Is, is the diversity of the clientele. We, we've done feng shui, we've done fast to Indian and Chinese cultures, um, working with Iranian cultures, working with Americans from the West Coast, from Texas. It's a very, very transitional area. And you mentioned to me that you have a design approach. Uh, you mentioned charade. It's, uh, explain to me about that. So what we do with every client, whether it's a remodel or a custom home or grand estate, is we start with a design charrette, where I'm trying to pull out of the client what they're looking for dream-wise, and then start sketching right there in the meeting with them, and within the first half hour. And what that does is allow us to go through multiple ideas and throw away the ones the client doesn't like. And so by the end of that two hour meeting, we've all walked out of that meeting kind of with the, with the design direction and an idea that everybody has the same one in their head. Wow, so the first two hours you come here to the house, you sketch the ideas the first time you meet them, and we have a conceptual design. And we have a conceptual design, a lot to work out, but we have a conceptual design that they can go home with and, and, and start dreaming about, and then two to three weeks later, I'll come back with the first presentation and then wow them again. So we right here at Bethesda in this gorgeous contemporary house and I see so many features. I see a lot of stonework, a lot of unique tons of light and windows. Tell me about the design of this house. Well, we had a great client. He actually runs uh, Sarah Stone. Uh, so that's why some of the great stone work out front and in the back and throughout the house. Um, he added his own personal touch with the detailing on the stone, which is wonderful for the clients to add. Uh, but really coming in with a new language, a new fresh look for the Bethesda area, contemporary design, full of light, full of open space for his family to grow into. Uh, as you walk in the door, you get that light, you get that openness, and you get the views into the backyard at the same time. 
So you have it here, when we look in, you have the outdoors to the inside. It's completely, you see the pool, the yard. How do you design? Do you design the landscape as well? Well, we, as we're designing the home, we design the home for s the specific lot. And, and, you know, but, we're, but we also design for the home for how people live. We're standing in the heart of the kitchen where, where it's the command center, where you get to look over the family room and, and communicate. You have the breakfast area over here. And it, it's one of those things where that open combination of spaces is where people do 90% of their living these days. James, we're right here at the owner suite, and it's just beautiful. Well, thank you. Uh, it has, it takes everything what people are looking for these days. A small private office, a grand window wall to let light in, as well as two very nice walk-in closets. But the, the special feature is the owner's bath itself. Uh, grand glass covered shower, freestanding tub, lots of light coming in, and the floating vanity at the same time. It's just a gorgeous bath. We know that you've designed completely different homes, and, but just equally beautiful. Uh, and we're looking forward to seeing those homes as well. Well, I can't wait to show you the next one. All right, very yes. good. Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. We are here in Great Falls, Virginia at Chateau de Riviere. James, this is a house you have designed specifically for a builder who have uh, this house for sale. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a chateau-esque chateau style house. Tell me about it. Well, we, we, we designed this home with a, a precast exterior to really bring out uh, a, an exquisite look, almost that neo-European uh, feel with the grand windows, with the extremely large entryway, uh, the large columns, really a, a beautifully dressed up but chic look for, for Great Falls. <laughs> Absolutely, and you got me going. So let's go inside. <laughs> Great. So when you have a grand house and a state home, you need a grand entry. And this is exactly what we did in this home. You walk in and you, the stair opens up across the grand window, almost 20 foot of glass, 14 foot wide of glass. It really, really pops your eyes out as you come through with the volume space, the great coffered ceilings above, and then the beautiful curved rail above really, really sort of sings to you as you open, open up the door. here in this magnificent exterior. Now, a lot of your design, you incorporate the uh, exterior into the interior of the house with this huge windows, grand opening. Tell me here, because it's from every room. Even though we're not in California, we're in Virginia, we do have some beautiful days here uh, where we want to be able to flow from the outside and in. And, and so you really get not only design in the interior architecture, but as far as rooms, but you're also designing the exterior spaces and how they connect. So again, you get a grand house like this, and when you entertain 50 to 100 people, you get to have people flow from room to room, inside to out, without feeling or bumping shoulders with the person they don't want to bump shoulders with. <laughs> and you really have it from room to room. You have it all the way from the office to this area, to the family room, everywhere. And then you have this amazing seating right by the pool so you can bring the food to the cabana and enjoy it. It's beautiful. So in this house you work with uh, a builder and um, he brought design features and also interior designer and you did all sorts of uh, features. So together it seems like there's so many to look, so much to look at that it's almost like a music to a beautiful music to an amazing orchestra. So tell me about all this things are going on here with ceilings and features. You're right, it's a very collaborative effort between us and the builder in this in this project especially, uh, creating the coffered ceilings, the barreled ceilings. Uh, we'll get, when we get upstairs, we'll even see other features and step, step ceilings, two-story closets. Um, we had a lot of fun with this house, really creating you know some really special memory points in it. And this vast kitchen. 
Well, as, as the house yeah. gets bigger, so does the kitchen. And, and again, they do a great job with the kitchen design and, and with, with it, the openness to the family room, the openness to the rest of the house and the light that pours in, you really don't feel like it's you're, you're in a house of this size. No, you see the outside from everywhere in yes. this kitchen. Yes, yes. And then look at that amazing refrigerator. Oh, I have to show it. <laughs> <laughs> James, uh, we're here at the owner's suite and amazing features. Tell us all about it. Well, we start with a very simple grand owner suite with, with windows letting morning light in. But the more interesting thing is we're standing in your wife's dream closet right now, two stories tall, almost 25 feet in length, almost 25 feet in width, uh, cabinets and, and shelves uh, galore. Uh, that's just one of those features when you're dealing with a house of this size, you're looking for you know closets, bathrooms for somebody's dream house. It not only does it not end with the closet itself, but next door in the bathroom, you have uh, custom mosaics that the interior designer created uh, with has a backdrop to the tub with the oval coffered ceiling. We're here at the lower level. Clearly, it doesn't feel like the lower level. A lot to offer here, right? Yes. Well, this is where we get to have some fun. Not only do we have this great rec room area, entertaining area with the bar and, and the game area, we have a safe room. We have a great exercise room with glass doors. And then right next to that, we have a spectacular spa bath with, again, some beautiful mosaic tiles and well, just so well appointed. James, thank you for having us here today. We have seen two most gorgeous houses and you are a master and a genius in the craft. Well, thank you very much. And I look forward to uh, designing some more homes that we can have you visit for. Absolutely, looking forward to it. Thank you. It's a very great pleasure. And thank you for joining us to the American Dream. Nareet and Alex always seem to know the coolest places and have the most amazing listings. That was incredible. Next, they had a chance to go out and talk with an industry professional. Let's check it out. Well, as you know, The American Dream is a national TV show centered on real estate, lifestyle, the culture of our cities. Absolutely love Washington, D.C. Nareet Coom, Alex Martinez, they show us all around town, but sometimes we just got to sit them down and pick their brain about what's happening in the real estate environment. So they're joining us from their office. Welcome to the show again. Let's talk some uh, real estate, shall we? Hi, Craig. Great to be here. Yeah, it's so fun being out in the marketplace and seeing just what I consider one of the best cities in the country. But you guys are the top team out there in Washington, D.C., helping home buyers, home sellers. And let's, uh, let's talk about what's going on in the market. Needless to say, it is a crazy marketplace. So before we start talking about what you think is coming up in 2021, how do we sum up this crazy year of 2020 as it pertains to the real estate market? I want to start with you, Nareet. Sure. So, yes, crazy year it is. <laughs> um, you know, when the pandemic started, we were all hunkered down, not sure what to do, no face mask available, all that stuff. People... Um, it was in the spring market that hit right at the beginning of the spring market where we had tons of buyers, low interest rates, lots of interest, but people did not want to have uh, buyers coming into their house. Didn't yeah. want to put the house for sale. They were scared, obviously. Um, so we had no, practically almost no inventory and tons of buyers. And then as it eased up and we, we people got used to the idea, we start to have more inventory, but not much. And multiple offers on every house. The next house was more expensive than the previous house. It, I would imagine there's a tremendous amount of demand. What do we what do we do with all the buyers out there? And do you think this thing changes going into 2021, Alex? Yes, absolutely. So I, you said it right. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, everybody panicked and, you know, they didn't know what to expect. And uh, as they realized that, you know, they needed to move and it was 
definitely a great, and it is still a, a great time to purchase because of the low interest rates. They wanted to go ahead and, and, and purchase something. And now the sellers are holding back because they want to be protected to their families and they don't want to allow people into their homes. But they're starting easing, easing it out uh, just because of, you know, things are being controlled and things are looking better. Now we're experiencing the second wave and people are, you know, pushing back again and, and saying, what, we don't know what to expect. So we're anticipating that, you know, the vaccine and everything that is to come is going to alleviate all this. And uh, we for sure know that we got to take advantage of the low interest rates, one. Yep. Two, you have to understand that, you know, we're all exposed to, to the virus for sure. We have to be cautious and everything for sure. But you have to know that uh, help us in the way and we're you're looking forward to, you know, everything that is to come. And all these sellers that have been holding back, I have to say, I think that they're eventually are going to ease out and they're going to sell. But there is so much competition right now. Every, every house is, you know, multiple offer situation, people above asking price, waiving their appraisal contingency, doing all these crazy things. We, we love our home. We're not going anywhere. But I don't, Miri, don't you think that it's going to soften a bit if rates go up? Don't you think, what do you think is going to happen in the new year when things calm down, vaccine comes out, more homes go on the market? Does that put a little pressure on sellers? It seems like the ride yes. up is going to soften a bit. Right. So there's so many things that are actually going to come all together, in my opinion. Um, and, and I keep on telling sellers right now, it's probably the best time I've ever seen in terms of sellers to put the house in the market and get the best price, the best conditions, and even get the rent back and be able to stay in the house for a little longer and all the conditions we want because there's no listings out there. Uh, but then when you look at what's going to happen next year, some things will affect next year. One is maybe interest rates going to stay low or not. I mean, eventually they're going to have to start going up. Right. Uh, but the other things is if we hopefully doubling, we'll have the vaccine, um, people are going to celebrate. People are going to want to finally going to go and see their parents, grandparents, travel, there's going to be less buyers out there. They're, they're going to be in celebration mode. They're going to want to go and do some stuff. And now more sellers are going to want to come back to the market because they're not as worried about the, the uh, COVID. So maybe we'll have plethora of listings. And the other thing that is really important is the forbearance. So mm, if yeah. you remember, the government had enacted no foreclosures. You can, you, it's okay not to pay your mortgage for six months. Uh, well, that ends end of December. Yep. We had about 7.2 million people who went to forbearance. Now we have 3.6. We still have 3.6 million people in forbearance not paying their mortgage. Those people, it's about 7% of the total market, housing market, uh, or houses in the United States. That's a huge number. Yep. And if by the end of December they have to pay the mortgages and nothing has changed in terms of employment and this and that, they may not be able to do that. And are we going to see a surge of foreclosures, a surge of listings? Are they going to have to sell their houses at discount? This is a very questionable um, situation that I'm not sure how it's going to affect later on next year. But for now, between now and spring, I think it's totally a great market for sellers. Don't you think that's all we can look at is the now? I mean, just hearing you for that brief moment talk about all of these variables Look, I got into real estate 20 years ago. Media played in at some point in the middle, and we've we've created the show, and it's it's gone national in all these different cities. But I've always had a tie into the real estate environment, and I can't think for the life of me any market that I thought that was crazier than this one. I mean, 2008, there was a market crash, but it was bad bank loans, people foreclosing, short sales foreclosures, and then back up. It, there wasn't a Rubik's Cube of variables. I mean, you just listed off a, a vaccine, interest rates, uh, people who, you're right, they haven't seen their families. Again, I hate to continue to personalize it, but my parents, my children's grandparents haven't even seen their kids yet. That's the first thing we're going to do, or grandkids. So there's just so many wild variables here that make it really tough. But the one thing I think you hit on the head and you read is now. Some people need to move now. Some people need to make decisions now, have that bigger home or want that bigger home. And so I think we got to take this day by day. Alex, what do you think of 2021? Do you, do you have any predictions for the market? And what advice would you give to people buying or selling going into this new year? 
I think it's a great question. Uh, I think it all boils down to time. Uh, if I knew what to come into 2021, oh my God, uh, you know, everybody will love me and just, you know, I wouldn't be doing what, what I do. But I can tell you one thing anything in life is all about time. You got to take advantage by the last. We saw it in, back in 2008, how prices increased dramatically. Some people took advantage of it, some others didn't take advantage of it and ended up taking a loss. All I'm saying is, we anticipate it's going to be a great market, but let's take advantage for, you know, let's take advantage of the now. You said it correctly, Craig. The now, it's great. Interest rates are super low. Sellers are getting multiple offers and, you know, they're getting the best they can get. So if they're even thinking of selling, this is the time to do it. This is the time where you're going to have to pull the trigger. I know that we're dealing with a pandemic and all that, but everything is going to be fine. And you got to take anything in business, anything in life is timing, and timing is here. Well, right. I want to say something about it now, too, is we have created so many new ways on how to protect when we're listing houses, mm. uh, working with pandemic. We've been so creative, which is unbelievable. Um, and, and having limited people coming to your house with face masks, with the shoe covers, with gloves and hand sanitizers and not having a whole group of people coming in at one at a time. Uh, doing FaceTime showings, uh, great virtual tours. There's so many things we're doing differently that it's so wonderful. And uh, just just that is the now, how we do it, is a great thing. Well, and it's, it's really why we love highlighting you on our show as the experts in Washington, D.C. We love bridging the gap of homeownership. My parents still live in the house I was raised in. It's something we're passionate about as a show. And look, some people are going to need to buy, want to buy, low interest rates, a lot of demand there. Some people are going to need to sell, whether you want to or have to. Nurit and Alex, your team, you guys are with a great organization of the agency. We love having you on the show. Thanks for coming on, talking about the real estate market. And I know we're going to come show some of your top properties up next. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. All right. If you're looking for homes in the greater DC area, then you're in luck. We have their newest listings. Let's take a look. Welcome to this magnificently renovated five bedroom craftsman ranch, offering oversized rooms with custom design elements, detailed woodwork, Brazilian cherry hardwood floors, and a multitude of windows. Designed by award-winning architect Ru Ponti, who combined influences from California and Asia, this home offers a massive family room, an impressive gourmet kitchen, an expansive lower level, a beautiful Ipe wood deck, and a screened-in gazebo overlooking the acre wooded lot. The impressive gourmet kitchen features dramatic skylights and walls of windows, high-end stainless steel appliances, wood mode two-tone cherry cabinetry, black galaxy granite counters, and two kitchen pantries. A magnificent family room, breakfast room, and kitchen area offers multi-level vaulted ceilings, oversized transom windows, a striking slate fireplace with hammered copper detail, a built-in entertainment center, and numerous sliding doors to the back deck. The formal dining room features oversized windows, recessed lighting, beautiful slate floor, and sliding door to the flagstone patio. A handsome office overlooks the spectacular backyard through an oversized picture window. An elegant powder room is highlighted by a designer vessel sink. The sumptuous master suite has an impressive vaulted ceiling and a unique built-in custom designed window seat, while the spa-like master bath features a double vanity with Caesar stone counter, two skylights, designer porcelain tile, and a large walk-in shower with two shower heads. Check out the dazzling custom staircase, which features a mix of Brazilian cherry and American cherry wood leading down to the expansive lower level with a light-filled recreation room, a large laundry room, an exercise room, and a guest bedroom with a full bath. And who wouldn't love this immense wine cellar with floor-to-ceiling wine racks and a temperature-controlled environment? 
Located minutes from an abundance of shopping, dining, and entertainment options, this thoughtfully designed town provides you the perfect space for family living and entertaining. with this contemporary craftsman perfectly situated on a serene cul-de-sac in sought-after Seneca Highlands. Constructed with meticulous attention to detail, this 6,200 square foot home combines modern comforts and elegant finishes with an abundance of family living space. Prepare delicious gourmet meals in the spacious eat-in kitchen, offering granite countertops, designer tile, a center island with a breakfast bar, and a sunlit window-lined breakfast room. Entertain family and friends in the sophisticated living room, the gracious formal dining room, the cozy sunroom, or in the inviting family room, showcasing a reclaimed farm bean mantle with a river stone surround. Enjoy the spectacular sunset from the expansive deck overlooking the beautifully landscaped and fully fenced one and a half acre yard. At the end of the day, relax in the palatial master suite with a generous sitting area, a large walk-in closet, and a spa-like master bath finished in designer tile and offering a Kohler soaking tub and separate shower. Located on a prized lot in an established neighborhood with easy access to major commuter routes and close to parks, recreation, and numerous shopping and dining destinations, this is the perfect place to call your home. Welcome to this beautifully updated two-bedroom, two-bathroom corner unit in sought-after Georgetown Village. This bright, spacious, and freshly painted condo offers recessed lighting, crown molding, parquet hardwood floors, a private balcony, and an abundance of windows letting in loads of natural light. The renovated kitchen boasts granite countertops, tile flooring, and sleek modern cabinetry. Sunlight floods the spacious living area with a wall of sliding glass doors opening to the balcony and a separate dining space. The large owner suite features windows on two sides, dual closets, and an attached updated bath with a contemporary vanity and designer tile. Enjoy the convenience of an in-unit laundry room, a roomy storage unit, and off-street parking. This beautiful gated community is located in the heart of North Bethesda and offers basketball courts, a community center, a swim club, tennis courts, and more. Within walking distance of the White Flint Metro, the Pike and Rose Shopping and Dining Complex, and the convenient No Bee Market featuring Whole Foods, CVS, and more, this is the perfect place to live your best life. Hope you enjoyed this episode in the greater DC area as we saw culture, lifestyle, and real estate. Remember to follow us on social media at The American Dream TV and we will see you there. Have a great week and cheers to your American dreams.